Welcome to Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope, where you join us as we accept the world's invitation to visit. Happy traveling! Today on Travel Scope, I cruise the World Heritage Rideau Canal from Ottawa, Canada's capital, through forests, lakes, and locks to village pleasures and natural wonders. Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope is made possible by EVA Air flies to some of the world's most interesting places and all major cities in Asia. We offer premium economy class in its own separate cabin, serving both business and leisure travelers. EVA Air, a Star Alliance member. And no jet lag. Jet lag prevention. An idea hatched out of military necessity. The British-American War of 1812 the Rideau Canal gained its true glory in peacetime. It was hacked and hewed by hand from a wilderness of rough brush, malaria-ridden swamps, and unyielding rock. Once its military need faded, it became a watery route for settlers to Canada's interior, as well as a major shipping link between Canada's former and present capitals, Kingston and Ottawa. Today, the Rideau Canal is a UNESCO World Heritage Site a popular tourist and recreation attraction, and the oldest continuously operating canal system in North America. It's 125 miles transverse, a landscape populated with thick forests, placid waters, peaceful parks, and colorful communities. Each year, thousands cruise its waterway and chartered vessels. For our journey, the canal begins in Ottawa, and so do we. Canada's Gothic-style parliament stands on a bluff overlooking the Ottawa River. It is the official heart of the city and hosts many local and national celebrations. Its grounds are peppered with monuments to many distinguished Canadians. And every quarter hour, the Peace Tower sounds its call for a cessation of hostilities, wherever they may be. There is a multitude of museums in the capital region, and each tells a bit of Canada's story. From the National Gallery of Canada, the Museum of Nature and Arctic Gallery, and the War Museum, which honors the sacrifices without glorifying the act. To the Canadian History Museum, with its iconic totem poles and canoe-shaped roof, symbolizing a nation born from consensus and pulling together for the common good. While Greater Ottawa is about 1,000 square miles and has many communities, the central core is about seven different neighborhoods. In Wellington West, which specializes in artisan shops and Canadian goods, is considered one of the up-and-coming ones. What was this neighborhood like before this influx of artisans and artists into the area? Hintonburg, Wellington West, it's kind of a downtrodden neighborhood through the influx of new businesses like us. We have craft breweries, local goods, and kept that mix of different people from different walks of life who want to support growing a stronger local economy. How about the different neighborhoods in Ottawa? Are they distinct? Oh, absolutely. We've got some amazing pockets of culture. You've got Little Italy around the corner, Chinatown, the Byward Market and beyond. The possibility of sampling a wide diversity of dining options is high on the list of Ottawa's palette of attractions. And since most of the eateries feature farm-to-table cuisine, a visit to the Ottawa's Farmer's Market in the Glebe neighborhood is a good way to be introduced to the city's good food obsession. At least 60% of this is from this market. Well, what do you think about the, the kind of product you get from Canada? Is it more intense because it's got a shorter growing I, season or what? Because it's cold and because it's so unique, it, it will actually be a very, very nice product because it's more refined. For Sounds example, a little bit like Canadians to me. Is that right? <laughs> I guess, yeah. yeah. Show me that beat there. This beat here? It's yeah, the Chioja it? beat. That's so if you look into the eyes, very it'll, strange. it'll hypnotize you. I've never gone to sleep yeah, yeah, looking yeah. at a beat no, before. No, there you go, but it works. But you could. That's yeah. what would work. So this is what does that taste like? Does it taste like a beet? It tastes like a beet, but it's not as sweet as your standard beet, but it tastes less beety. Tastes, so people who don't like beets like these. Oh good. And so it they doesn't, also yeah. like these, which are golden beets, which are less astringent. I have I have yeah. my, my wife doesn't like beets because she says it tastes like dirt. Yes, exactly. These ones don't taste as much like dirt. Yeah. Well, the culmination of every market experience is you have to end up eating at the market. 
And these are all locale, of course. Yes. Bon appetit. Just like Parliament Hill is the historic and official heart of downtown Ottawa, each Ottawa neighborhood has an anchor that lends its character to the surrounding community. Life in the Byward Market Quarter radiates from the close to 200-year-old market. Designed as a gathering place, the neighborhood plays host to some of Ottawa's cutting-edge galleries, liveliest cafes, coolest bars, and most innovative eateries. An Ottawa original snack are beaver tails. What's a beaver tail? Let's find out. How many different varieties do you have? Ten. This is the classic. It comes with cinnamon and, and dough and grease. <laughs> and uh, uh, they have 144 locations around the world. But this was the first. Often described as an urban center on the edge of nature, Ottawa's downtown is just 15 minutes from the natural beauty of Gatineau Park's forests, lakes, ponds, and biking and hiking trails. With more than 100 miles of biking and hiking paths, it's easy to trade in the capital's city-fied pleasures for nature's blessings. Ottawa and the Rideau Canal's histories are intertwined. The genius behind the canal's construction was British Colonel John Bond. And Bytown, the settlement he created on the south bank of the Ottawa River, became Ottawa. The Bytown Museum is located alongside the canal's eight Ottawa locks. Valerie, they call the Rideau Canal the most amazing engineering feat in the world. What's so amazing about it? Well, it is one of the largest examples of a slack water canal, and it's the longest continuously operating canal in North America. What's interesting about each individual lock station is they were given the plans when they were being built, but each mason or group of masons interpreted them just ever so slightly differently, so there'll be subtle, small differences at each lock station. In the design, but also the setting, too, I would think. This is amazing here, of course, yeah. but I'm sure that on the trip to come, we're going to be having amazing experiences yes. along the Rideau Canal. All aboard who has to come aboard. Aye, aye, Captain. From our point of embarkation in downtown Ottawa, we ease our vessel along city streets and trails, under historic bridges, and through working locks on the first link of our Rideau Canal adventure. The Rideau Canal was constructed from 1826 to 1832, and it affected life along its path right from the beginning to the founding of the town that would eventually become Ottawa, to the small villages and towns along its watery trail. Now behind me, you hear the mill that was created because of the Rideau Canal. Because of the mill, the town of Manatick is here today. You got it going, Paul? Oh, yes, yes. What, what is this running here? Well, this adjusts the flow to the turbine, and that drives the corn grinder here, and the shaft goes upstairs to turn the zip that separates the flour from the chaff. Now, this mill has been here since 1860. Has it been in operation all that time? No, for a while it was shut down. And it's come back now. This is good. Keep heritage alive. Well, why don't we go to step two? There are two elevators that, that we need here. One to elevate grain that can come back in through the millstone, and the second elevator elevates the ground flour from the millstone up to the third floor. It's so ingenious. What's step three? Well, step three is now the millstone. We have to start the millstone Let's up. Let's go do that. Well, this is the most important part of the operation. Now, one guy did this? Yep. Oh, they're starting to move. This is like an orchestra in here going on now, isn't it? It has a wonderful sound to it. How old is that millstone? Oh, it's at least 160 years old. Are you still grinding Absolutely. flour here? Absolutely. In the, in the summer months, we grind almost every Sunday about four to 500 pounds. Well, let's go see the end result. Well, there we are. There's the beginning. And there's the end. Of course, this is the best end result. Have some of the product of your work. Mm. The only thing I have to say after tasting that is I'm glad I'm not gluten-free. <laughs> they make sweet use of the mill's flour at Manatick's Gingerbread Man. You find all sorts of interesting shops in these small villages and towns that are along the Rideau Canal. I'm with Richard, and he's the gingerbread man. What brought you here to Manatee? I always wanted to have this business in a small town because Manatee is a gingerbread town. It's 150 <laughs> years old and it just fits here very nicely. And here you are making wonderful treats for people. The butter tarts are very popular. Somewhere in the afterlife you will suffer for making us all so happy. Those are really fantastic. Thanks. What is your number one seller? The houses are very popular, but sure. as far as cookies go, this um, 
This is the poop, poop. emoji. <laughs> poop. And he is the number one seller. And the number two seller is Mr. Vader. Yeah. But don't you think that should be number two? Yeah, that should be number two. Taking one of these chartered boats down or up the Rideau Canal is certainly a glamping experience, a glamorous camping experience. Good morning. And the settings are wonderful. Where you get to stop, I mean, here, the lake is like glass, the trees are changing, Katie and geese flying south. It's just beautiful here. And we're stopped at Barrett's Rapids. You can stop wherever you like. As long as you can get to the lock in time and get through to the next spot, it's up to you. It's truly Canada at your own pace. What station are we at now? This is lock station 17. And see, we have a boat waiting to come on through. And in order to get through these locks, you have to be there half an hour before. Yep. So your timing's got to be good. Your timing's got to be good. But also, with this station, around the corner, we have a swing bridge that we operate as well. Ah. So you've got to clear that bridge, because otherwise that gets locked as well. You made it. We made it. But of course, the idea is to take this at your own pace and not to be in a big, gigantic hurry. No, just take nature in and just go slowly. On to Merrittville and Smith Falls. One of the most historic villages on the Rideau Canal is Merrittville, whose beginnings can be traced back to the 18th century, long before the canal existed. It's been named Canada's most beautiful village, and its stunning series of lock stations are just three of the town's more than 100 historic sites and buildings. Merrittville has a thriving community of artists and artisans, and who better to introduce me to them than the town's mayor? How you doing, Mayor? Well, Joseph, nice to see you. Ah, oh, so you got a coffee for me. I do indeed. Yeah, the Canadian hospitality. That's right. The most beautiful village in Canada. How do you get that name? It's based on heritage. It's a town that has an amazing group of people. It has a great artist and artisan community. We've got just about a little bit of everything. We'll be mm -hmm. going up to gray art glass, but we have painters, potters, metal workers, silversmiths, goldsmiths, but everything you can think of when it comes to artists. Joseph, this is Mrs. McGarrigles. We oh. have award-winning mustards and relishes. I hope you'll be able to drop by later and see I'll, I'll make a point of it. So today we're going to be making a friendship ball, and we're going to start by gathering some glass out of our furnace here. Okay, we're going for the color now. So we have some crushed up chunks of colored glass in this tray here. Now we're going to go ahead and heat up that color and melt it into the surface. And the next thing is going to be your time, Joseph. You can notice as it's cooling down, it becomes a little bit stiffer, eh? And a little more resistance. Yep. Wow, this is kind of cool. It's like pulling taffy, but you wouldn't want to eat this. <laughs> so I think I'm at the end of my job. All right, we're going to heat it back up and uh, okay. see what we've got there. So how long has the store been here? So the studio was established in 1985. Must have been uh, one of the first of the artisan shops here in Merrickville. Yes. So you're making it round again. Yeah, we're just making it. What a happened nice... to all my great designs? <laughs> well, you'll be able to see them as we oh, blow okay. it out. All right. Look at the swirling of colors. Wow. And then we're going to add a hook onto the top so we can hang it from a window or a tree. It's always magical to see what artists can do with glass. Thank you so much. And there we have our finished product. The canal was a boom for towns that sprang up along its banks in the 19th century. Yet since then, some went bust. Smith Falls is a river town that rose from economic ashes. Once the home of Hershey's chocolate, since Hershey's departure in 2008 and the legalization of marijuana in 2018, Smith Falls has become the cannabis capital of Canada. The change has revitalized Smith Falls and transform the town's future from dark brown to bright green. How sweet it is. When it was Hershey's, there was a tourism element to the factory, and you're infusing a little 
pardon the word infusing, but you are infusing <laughs> a little uh, uh, tourism into this product as well. The Hershey aspect of this is always a part of the origin story. You're still, it's the same building. We dreamed of someday being able to open our own visitor center to be able to bring some of the tourists back. There was about 400,000 that came through, mostly on school buses, wow. uh, to tour around the chocolate factory. Uh, now those school kids are all grown up and they can come and experience something a little bit different. So we want people to learn about the plant itself, the effect that it can have on your body, and then they can exit through the gift shop, like the classic tourism experience. <laughs> For eons before the canal, Canada's indigenous people used the Rideau River as a trading and transportation byway. Today, Smith Falls school children are learning the fine art of canoe building from their First Nations elders. You know what I love about the canoe is so connected to Canada in so many ways. 12-footers were popular because of the many waterways, rivers, streams mm -hmm. we have around here. But the First Nations people were using the Rideau River for 10,000 years? Oh, if not more. When the settlers came in and you have the voyageurs and the fur trade taking place, they basically took the same design. The French were smart enough to say, well, this works, let's yeah. just do a variation on it. So the rule of thumb is we'll pass twice per hole. And you see twice there's, there's four hole. holes. There's always an exception to that rule because mother nature ain't exactly symmetrical. Right, so how long would it take to make a canoe like this? Um, we're on pace to have it done in 12 days. You're continuing the heritage by teaching children. And they're not all First Nations people who no, are that's teaching. Correct. That's correct. So what's the response? The response oh, is tremendous. great. And I think with our kids, with all the technology now, they've really got away from nature. So if we can educate them how important nature is and trees, that they got a fight and chance to save it. So this seemingly small step of teaching people how to do a canoe has bigger ramifications. The kids get a context exactly. of what this is about. You know, it's interesting on this tour that we're doing along the Rideau Canal, mm -hmm. all the different artisans and the different villages, it's wonderful to see the people put their spirit into these crafts. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And when you see them actually being created, you start to understand what you've got in your hand <laughs> and what, what you've got in your hand. So <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. Inspired by Chuck and Janet, we head back to kayak and cruise Big Rideau Lake and finish off a beautiful Canadian day with cheese, wine, Sante. Sante. and sunset. A lovely morning. Yeah, but you can't come to Canada without having uh, pancake breakfast with real maple syrup. Look how beautiful that is. Now, it's not just a sap out of the tree, obviously. Oh, no, no, no. You wouldn't want to eat that. Well, no, you wouldn't. As the sap comes from the tree, it looks like water, and it's about 2% sugar on right. average. Okay. So this syrup, when it's finished, is 67% sugar. And the difference is in the flavor between the colors. Now, how's the best way to taste um, maple syrup? I mean, is it like wine? Is there a Yes, way? there is. You, Do you, I swirl it you, around in my mouth? You There's put it in your mouth, and you gently to swirl it in on the, the back of your tongue. On the back of my tongue. Ah, uh, that might be my favorite. And where better to have this fabulous breakfast in the middle of this wonderful lake? Th thank you for bringing this out. Oh, you're very welcome. I'll eat syrup anywhere. <laughs> Two meters. We still see it. I still yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, I still see it. And we have four meters, so four meters is about uh, 12, 12, 12 feet. 12 feet. A little bit more. It's a very nice water quality. What is Watersheds Canada? We're working to protect Canada's fresh water through stewardship and education projects. What can we do as visitors, in particular boaters? Well, water is a very special element because it's so connected with everything that happens on the land. So boaters can have a, a very important role reporting on things that they see. They should look for uh, areas that don't look so healthy, where the water is maybe not very clear, that the water is maybe a bit too green, areas where there is degradations, where we see that we're losing habitats. I that see. is so important for wildlife and for fish in particular. So I think for boaters, it's about making sure that you leave the system as clean as you found it. Leave only footprints. Yeah. Yes. I guess you could say that as far as the water is concerned as well. Leave only ripples. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> kind of stand in the middle here, and you try not to lose the boat. <laughs> I'm gonna keep the boat, because what happens is when they open the doors, it becomes like a tide that's coming against you and moves the bus. Can you imagine if they had four or five boats in here? You got to really keep your boat close to the wall. 
Otherwise, you're gonna be hitting other boats and they don't want you to do that. Scottish and Irish immigrants did the heavy lifting of the building of the Rideau Canal. Close to a thousand of them lost their lives in the process. After their stint in the river, many built homes in villages like Westport, often using leftover stones from the work on the canal. Their heritage buildings can still be seen in the village. What kind of grape are we harvesting today? Vidal. Let's take a look here and see what we got. So you're gonna wanna cut it right at the stalk. That's the beauty of a cluster. So is this the only grape you do here, is Vidal? No, we do three grapes, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Vidal. Is your wine available throughout uh, Ontario? No, just here and some restaurants. And I understand you have your own restaurant. We do. We do wood-fired pizza. Hubby's a Swiss-trained chef. Has your family always been in the wine industry? No. Francois and I bought this property, and we had a glass of wine on the front porch. Uh -huh. The sun was setting, and it was super gorgeous, and we decided we should grow something. We ended up thinking grapes was a good idea. <laughs> well, nothing I like better than to walk through the vineyard, and particularly when the grapes are ready to harvest with either a winemaker or, or a grape producer. I mean, it's like the fantastic culmination of all the work that you've done. This is the fun part. It is the fun part. Yeah, let's get some grapes. I'm expecting some wine tasting later. I must tell you, that's my pay. Yes. So we're gonna steal, we got a little barrel thief here. We're gonna go into our mercury barrels. Yes. This is brand new Chardonnay, just finished malolactic ferment a few weeks ago. So it's gonna have a little bit of a buttery finish. And this is our flagship wine, if you will. This is the one we, we really love. Ah, yeah, it tastes like the wine of Burgundy. <laughs> it's fabulous. Well, it's good to start with the whites here at the barrel, but then if we're gonna get the reds, let's go Absol to that. Absolutely, let's have a the tasting bar. Well, we've been in the fields, and of course you've shared your hospitality with us. It's been wonderful to be here in this beautiful setting, but one thing we haven't done. Cheers. Cheers. From sunrises to sunsets, from maple syrup and wine tastings to gingerbread houses and glass baubles, our trip down river just keeps getting better. 103 miles from Ottawa, Jones Falls is an exclamation point on the Rideau Canal. Last couple of days left of the season, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Jones Falls is noted as one of the nicest lock stations on the canal. What makes this one particularly special? Jones Falls was a real engineering challenge when it was built. So uh -huh. what they ended up with was the second tallest lock on the Rideau. Ottawa would be the largest. We're second largest. We also have a large arch dam. The Keystone Arch Dam, at the time it was built, was the largest in North America. Not to mention what a beautiful site yeah. you have here. Oh, absolutely. Particularly this time of year in October, in the fall, and yeah. things are changing. For boaters that come here, what are the significant points of interest for them that they must see? We have beautiful trails around the site. That One is. goes right up past the dam, and we also have the historical Hotel Kenny. All of the locks masters and all the people that have helped us get through the canal have been absolutely wonderful. So thank you very much. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Coming into Sealy's Bay, I'm going to have to give my captain's hat back. This is our last stop on the Rideau Canal. It's been a great trip, mostly great weather. All of it a great experience. Woohoo! Thank you for joining me on my Rideau Canal experience. Before there was a Canada, there was a Rideau Canal. It was constructed in 1832 and 35 years later, the Canada Confederation took place. Its watery path winds through a land of forests, lakes, rocks, and people, people who live in villages, towns, and cities. It is altogether fitting that my discovery of the area took place along the water because the canoe and canoe culture is so much a part of Canada. And while our method of traveling through the canals, rivers, lakes, and locks was more comfortable than in a canoe, wow. we still witness that Canadian spirit of community in action. To be able to be here in this family's vineyard, to be invited to participate in a celebration of all their hard work and everything they love is a real honor for me and an illustration of all that's good about Canada. Till next time, this is Joseph Rosendo reminding you of the words of Mark Twain. Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. Happy traveling. Oh, and cheers, eh? Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope is made possible by 
EVA Air flies to some of the world's most interesting places and all major cities in Asia. We offer premium economy class in its own separate cabin, serving both business and leisure travelers. EVA Air, a Star Alliance member. And no jet lag. Jet lag prevention. For a DVD of today's show, or any of Joseph's Travel Scope adventures, call 888-876-3399 or order online at travelscope.net. You can also email us at tv at travelscope.net. Now that we've cruised Canada's Rideau Canal, Learn more at Travelscope.net, where you can follow my worldwide adventures through my magazine, blog, podcast, and social media. Stay in touch, 888-876-3399 or TV at Travelscope.net. Mm -hmm. What would you do to save that? Let's let, let, me have you, <laughs> let me have you save that. So. All right. Coffee. Okay, right. Coffee. <laughs> she ruined it. <laughs> She ruined it, it was perfect. It was the one. Sante. So we have a trio of wild mushrooms sauteed with a little bit of thyme. Merci beaucoup. Goldie. Yeah. Best meal we've had in Canada. Oh no, I locked us out. That's really bad.